Hello. So now I'm going to show you how you do the implementation of the test cases. So we already finished the, the task, the first task associated to the definition of the test cases. So we move it to the tasks done. Now we pick the next, the next task, we implement the test cases and move it to the in progress column. And of course I assign it to me, so I convert it to an issue. Okay. And after converting to an issue, I can assign it to me. Okay. Good. Uh, something that I'm going to also do is that since I am the only one that is going to implement the story, all the tasks of the story, I'm, uh, I'm going to assign the story to me as well. Okay, so I, I convert to an issue. Okay, and then I can basically assign it to myself. Okay, sorry. There's a small issue here with the markdown, but I will fix it. Good. So what I'm gonna do next is to move to the IntelliJ. And in IntelliJ, the first thing I'm gonna do is to change the administration service. So what I need to do now, since I'm going to define the uh, implement the tests, I need to define what's going to be the input of this service, what is going to be the output. So to do this kind of things of, of work, you basically need to look at uh, the code that already is implemented. And we realize that in the course package, you have a course DTO object that basically contains the information associated with uh, a course, which is the name, the acronym, and the academic term. Okay, and it also contains a status which, which is not relevant in this case. But what is relevant here is that to create a new course execution, you need to have the name of the course, the acronym of the course execution, and the academic term. So this is a uh, uh, this data transfer object. This DTO is uh, uh, is useful to be used. It as the input. And what we're going to do is inside the service we are going to create the course execution and return a new DTO with the information. Actually it will be the same information, mostly we'll see that there are small differences, but uh, in the next step I'll show that to you. Now that I have defined what are the inputs and outputs of the service, I just said that it's going to return null because the, all the tests should fail. So the, the implementation of the service, so the implementation of the story will occur later. What I'm going to do now is to implement the uh, test cases. So what you see here is basically I defined a couple of uh, constants that I'm going to use. Actually, the course name, the acronym, and the academic term. This already this was the definition of the administration service administration service it was already done in the first phase and now I'm gonna show you how, do, how did I define implement the, the first test case so if you remember the first test case is a situation where the course exists but not the execution course so so the test case has three parts the given part where I define the context of the test case the when part, when I really exercise the code, so I invoke the method that is going to be tested. And the then part, where I just check if everything occurs according to the specification. Okay, so let's look at the given part. So since, it's, since in this test case, we say that the course already exists, so I say given a course, and I just create the course here. And then, so a course exists, and then I need to define what's going to be the input of our service. So the input is a course DTO, so I'm going to define a course DTO, and I'm going to just set the variables, or set the fields of the course DTO, 
with the relevant information. Then I'm going to invoke the service which implements the story and I'm going to receive the result there. In the last part I check if everything was okay. So then the return data is correct. So I'm going to observe, I'm going to read what is inside the result. So I expect that everything is okay, that the name is okay, the acronym is okay, and the academic term is okay. And, well, I'm going to check that the course execution is really executed. Here, what I'm going to use is basically I have the course there. So I expect that when I create a course execution, the course execution is added to the list of the course executions of this course. So what I need to do basically is go to the course, get the list of its execution courses. Actually, this is a set, okay? But the collection of its, of its course executions and see if the size is one, okay? And so I expect that the size is one. Next, I want to observe what is inside this course that was created. So what I'm going to do Basically, I, here I need to convert this set into a list so that I get the, the only element, the single element that is in the, the set now in the list so I can apply the get here and I obtain the course execution. So then I check that it's not new and it has the correct value. So again, I see if it has the acronym, it has academic term and if that it references the course. Now I can see if this test passes or fails. So it's going to fail for sure, but it's curi I'm curious to know how it's going to fail. Okay, so I can run only this test and see what's happening. So it's going to run a single test. So if you just, if your cursor is on top of a test, it runs only the test. If it's outside, it runs all the tests that are in the class. So it failed. It says the test is failed and it failed here, in this. So the first thing I'm going to check just failed. And Spock provides me very nice information because it tells me that I'm trying to compare a result null and try to get a null, a, a, the, see the value of name of null. So it, actually I get a new pointer exception. It failed because of the new pointer exception. Which means that, well, that's what they're expecting, but because in our implementation, the create adopt course execution is returning now. Okay, but you can observe these and, and, and see. So Spock helps you very well with, uh, to, to analyze with the, the, the results. It helps you, okay? Now we move to, to, to the implementation of the next test case. Uh, and in this case is the course does not exist neither the, the execution course, and both are created. So, in this context, I don't have a, a course. So, the only thing I need to do is just to create the course DTO. So, I create the course DTO and submit the course DTO so to be to to the uh, service. And why I expect what I expect to get here is two new entities: a course and a course execution. So I'm going to check that everything is okay, so that actually the, the behavior of the implementation is what I expect. So again, I look at the result and see if in the result I have the correct values. So that the, the DTO, the course DTO that is returned has the correct values. And that's what I'm doing here. Next, I'm going to see if the course was created. Okay. So what I'm going to check here is here, look, in this part, I'm going to see that, how can I know that the course is created? So the only, the, the only way to know is I need to query and see if it exists. Here I need the help of another service. So you need to read the code and know the other code to see what you need to use. So this course service actually is a service that already exists that provides me a method that returns the set of all cars, or actually here is a list. Let's check, is a list, if you see there, is the list of all courses that exist, and this list is a list of course details. 
So what I need to know is actually to, to check if it was a single one is there. Okay, and I can go a little bit further to say that uh, if there's no bug and that actually the course that was created is the one that with this name. So what I'm going to do again is just I get the first, the only element in this list and see if it is not new and check if the name is the name I have. The name, the, the, the course name. Okay, so in the second part. I want to check to do the same, but now, now not for the course, but for the course execution. So better to say that the course, the course execution is created. Probably better to say this. Later, we'll see that it is also in the database. So what I'm going to do here is, is very similar. In this service, OK, let's just look at the service. So this is a bit more complex. We'll learn a little bit about it. but. You have this get courses execution, and this basically returns a list of, a list of course execution here. Okay, so what I'm doing here is using this method to using the actually I'm using another method which is this one that giving the course name returns the I, yeah, I think it's the same. Okay, so I need to see if how many course executions are associated with this course? Okay, so what I'm going to check, I'm get the, getting the list of all the course execution and see if the, the size is one. And then I do the same. I obtain, I get the course execution, okay, is the first one in the list, and then I see if it is not new and if it is the correct values. Notice that here what I'm returning is a DTO, so I, I check that as the name. Okay, in the previous case, what as I was obtaining here in this course execution, actually, it was the course execution itself, the domain object. So I compared with course. Okay, these are the differences. Now I'm going to show you the, the next test case, and then the next test case is the case where I expect to show an exception because I'm trying to create a course execution that already exists. So what I'm going to do is that I need to in my context, define the course, a course, and a course execution, okay, and the course DTO such that they invoke. So that uh, when I create this course DTO, they are these two already exist. So when I invoke this, what I expect is that the system throws an exception. And the next tests are very similar. So it's just all these cases where the, the invocation of the service does not succeed. And so what I do is I create different types of course details, such that things fail, either because the course name is null or is a blank, and the same for the acronym and for the academic term. And I always expect the tutor execution to throw an exception, to, to get a, a tutor exception, okay? And now, just to finish, I can run all the tests so that you see that although I have implemented the test cases, they still fail, okay? Which is uh, expected because I haven't implemented the functionality yet. So let's see, so it's running. And It's running the nine tests, and you will see that well, all the nine tests fail for several different reasons. Okay, so but uh, actually, I finished this part, so I can return here and say, Okay, this task is complete, and I move it to the test. Okay, thank you. Good work. <laughs>